So welcome to another episode of Jeff Smith's Garage. Again, we're doing something different. This time we're going to talk about dialing in bell housings. Now, right away you're thinking, well, I've already seen all this stuff before. New information, brand new information that we stumbled across quite by accident that we've realized. And uh, it's really good information, so let's get to it. So let's talk a little bit about why we're doing this. Why, why are we checking concentricity on the bell housing? What we're talking about is this opening here and that matches the, the input shaft collar. And that collar needs to fit in here within a thousandth of an inch or so of, of, of clearance. So if, if that input shaft on the transmission is not lined up with the if this is the crankshaft and this is the transmission, if they're perfectly lined up, the transmission will shift just great. If they're misaligned, if the bell housing is high or the, you know, the transmission is low, whatever the reason is, if they're not lined up or if there's an angle to it, any of these issues will prevent that transmission from shifting, especially going into fourth gear when you're putting, you're connecting the input shaft and the output shaft together on any, any, tra any manual transmission, it, it, high speed, it just flat won't go. And so that's what we're talking about here. Now, in the old days, we could get away with all this stuff because um, of transmissions. For example, the Muncie over there is, uh, has, has a ball bearing input shaft. And, and if you look at it, you can move it quite a bit. It's a, that's just a function of a ball bearing. That was probably a little bit worn, but it's a function of a ball bearing. The Tremec on my right, your left, is, uh, is a tapered seat input shaft bearing. So tapered, tapered input bearings don't like misalignment. And if you look at this, you can see it, it doesn't move. So what we have to do is make sure the bell housing is lined up because otherwise those later amount of transmissions just won't shift. So we thought we'd talk a little bit about dial indicator movement because it's pretty critical. So we've preloaded this dial indicator and you can see that if it moves in this direction, you're towards the 90, it's actually moving in this direction. If it goes towards the 10, it's moving in that direction. Keep in mind that from zero, let's say for example that we start at the top and we go all the way to the bottom and the dial indicator moves to the 90 position. That's not 90 thousandths, that's 10 thousandths of an inch. It's moved in this direction, which would be essentially down. So it depends on which way the dial indicator moves. So you've got to just keep track of it. So to, in order to ensure parallelism, what you want to do is just, I use a, a whetstone and just hit this real quick just to try and remove any burrs on this side as well as on, and you can see on this bell thing it's been painted. This thing would really need to be cleaned up, but you want to make sure there's no burrs anywhere that could affect the parallelism. So part of the technique for checking either parallelism or concentricity is to use a magnetic base. There are flat static ones or this one's actually adjustable so it'll fit in an obtuse shape and uh, you stick it on here and clamp it down and then orient your dial indicator as close to uh, perpendicular to the opening as you can. So before we can check concentricity, we have to make sure that this flange is parallel to the bell housing and perpendicular to the crankshaft and the bell housing flange, both of them. So um, the way to do this is you set your dial indicator, as you can see, on the face here, and then just check the flatness relative. Now, if it's perfectly flat, this will be zero at the top, zero here, zero here, and zero here. Probably won't get there. The spec is five thousandths of an inch. but if we, now here's where we ran into problems. We actually shot this video last week, had to come back and completely redo this to figure out what we were doing wrong. The bottom of this bell housing was kicked way out at the bottom. It was like 30 thousandths. It was driving me crazy. I couldn't figure it out. Finally dawned on me on LS engines, the oil pan is flush with the bell housing flange. And um, because on the automatic transmissions, they bolt the transmission to the bottom of the oil pan. So what happened was I built this engine, kicked the pan back a little bit, and that pushed the bell housing this way relative to, the, to the, the bell housing relative to the bell housing flange. So what we end up is a situation where the bell housing is like this, exaggerated view, but still it's way out at the bottom. So when that happens, that turns, if you do it this way, it turns this circle into an ellipse and it will never be concentric. So you have to establish this first. In this particular case, 
Um, so what I ended up doing was grinding on the, on the oil pan until I had enough clearance, five, ten thousandths of an inch, just so I know it's not kicking the pan out or the, the bell housing out. Then that allowed this bell housing then to be within, almost within spec. I think we were at eight thousandths. You know, so um, we can probably maybe machine this a little bit, take it to my machinist and actually have him trim this until it's, they're, they're perfectly parallel to each other. And then that will allow, the parallelism will allow us then to set the concentricity. So now we've shifted to our big blocks because we have this already set up. So we just shifted over here. So this is our big block Chevy. This is a 66 SS396 that's going into my high school car. And what we're going to do is we're going to check the concentricity of the bell housing relative to the crankshaft. So assuming that this is flat, which it is, we've already checked it, it's within like three thousandths, I think, then, uh, and the spec is five, so we're good there. Now, now what we'll do is we set our dial indicator up to read the inside of this lip, and then, and then we'll measure it in uh, 90, we set zero here and go 90, 180, 270, and then back to zero and then we can see now we already checked this once already so we know this bell housing is about 10 to 12 thousandths out again it's down it's not the bell housing that's out because we had we put this on a fixture the quick time loaned us and it's it's less than a thousandth out so what it is is the engine is off which is not surprising this has been line honed twice i think stuff like that it's going to it's going to move around so what we have is a crankshaft center line again and now our bell housing is down about 10 to 12 thousandths of an inch. And we'll show you how we're going to adjust that. So before we get into moving this stuff, let's talk a little bit about dowel pins and alignment pins. So there's several companies that make them. Uh, Lakewood makes them, uh, Moroso, several companies. So, um, and what happens is you drive a portion of the, of the pin into the block and then the other one is offset. They come in three offset sizes, 7 thousandths, 14 thousandths, and 21 thousandths. So let's take the 7 thousandths for example. This is, if you bolt this, you drive this into the bell housing and you line them up so that they're both pointing in the same direction, if it's 7 thousandths, it's actually going to move this bell housing 14 thousandths of an inch. So in this case of this bell housing, it's off roughly about 12. We're going to use a pair of sevens. But the ones that I really like are from a company called uh, Rob MC. That's not a wrap group, uh, but they do make a really high quality product. And what it is, is you can see there's a serrated part here. This part goes into the block and the offset portion actually has a pair of flats on it. And the offset portion is will be what contacts the bell housing. And you can actually move this with a wrench. And then this fits into the block very nice. And then there's an Allen plug right here. And once you have them positioned where you want, you tighten the Allen plug and it locks them in place. The other, the other components, you either have to drive them in, and if they're not in the right place, you have to drive them back out, or they fit loose and they never really hold in place, and you have to drill holes inside of the block. Well, if the engine's still in the, in the car, there's no way to get a drill motor in here to make, those, to make those, those lock pins. So it's just easier to use these. It costs a little bit more, but they're, they're definitely worth the money. So in order to drive these dowel pins out, we just use a punch and a hammer and just come in here and just... Drive them right out, just like that. So now we're about to install the offset bushings, and this is an easy place to get confused. So this portion of the, of the pin is going to go into the block, and this part is actually the offset part. So if you sight down it, you can see where the offset is. On the Rob MC styles, they actually have flats on here for a 9 16 wrench, which means you can move this however you want to put it. So right now, the offset is down relative to the part that goes into the block. So what we're going to do, because our bell housing is also down, we want to spin it 180 degrees, and that will offset the bell housing up to compensate for how far these holes are relative to the bell housing. So when you install these offset bushings, you want to make sure and drive it all the way in so only the offset part is showing, because if you leave a portion of that out, as we've discovered, it, it messes everything up. So in this case, again, the, the wrench flats are parallel with the offset. We've now, you'll have to trust us that we have it up on both sides. And uh, then once we know that this is locked in and dialed in where we want it, then we'll go ahead and tighten these Allen plugs here and that will lock the, the bushing into the block. So now we've offset bushings are in, our dowels are in at seven thousandths, which is gonna move the whole bell housing 14 thousandths. So if we were 10 down below or 10, 12, something like that, we raise it 14, 
we should be somewhere inside of our 5000 spec. Uh, assuming that that's correct, then we'll take our Allen wrench, put it in here and tighten these up and lock these in place. But uh, first let's check to make sure where we are. So now that we've got our bell housing all lined up, um, we're basically ready to put the transmission in. Well, yeah, put the clutch and pressure plate stuff in and everything else. But <clears throat> so the whole idea with this is, again, is to line the input shaft of the transmission up with the crankshaft because if, it's, if you don't do it, it's just not going to shift properly, especially if you're using a later model transmission. So T56s and Tremec TKOs, TKXs, things like that, they're just not going to shift well if the bell housing is not lined up. So if you like what we're doing here at Just Garage, Click the sub subscribe button and tell your friends and we'll keep cranking these babies out.